Good morning. Um, we're going to go through the chi cell section. I named it to stick or not to stick. And it's a really important point because when people do chi cell, it doesn't mean you stick with everything. You have to know when to break. And the difficulty is that only experience can tell you. So all I can do today is give you ideas and give you some basic principles of what I would, I would personally do. And over the years, I've done chi cell with many, many, many different people. And to be honest with you, only in the very early days did I really struggle. So once I got the idea of stuff that you're not big enough and strong enough to fight everybody, then it really made a difference to know that, you know, in this situation here, learn to come off. Um, and I'll give you a quick example, okay? So do you mind if I just yeah. touch your hand? Okay, so we adopt the chi sal position. First thing you do is you're going to feel exactly what the person's intention is straight away. So there's, if you look at it, look to his hands and if we come underneath here there's a nice decent gap but it's got an angle to it and so for me straight away a little little movement like that is going to completely break that because his elbows out further than his hand so as I go like that he can't chase that movement it was worth me breaking that movement and losing the stick completely coming off his hand you're only going to feel that you need to stick with something when you're really threatened so I'd have to feel like there's a threat. So the first thing I like to do is change and stop the other person changing. That gives me the chance to hit people. And it also means that if they don't like this position, they try to balance it out. And as they try to balance out invariably, it leaves them incredibly vulnerable to being hit. But if you look at most students, they do this. They roll, they just do that movement, and the other person does that movement. They almost let that movement finish and then they try to get through. Well, the person's done what he wanted to do. If you want to win, you have to be in control. You have to be able to almost, in verse, set things up. And so it used to be the case, and I was like, yeah, I just do this for fun now. I just enjoy Wing Chun, and that's it. It's not a major, a major thing that I'm striving and striving and pushing for. But when you're doing chi sao with people, really all you want to do is make sure you contain them and then if you are good, you can actually think two or three moves ahead, which is bizarre because you shouldn't know what they're going to be able to do, but you can. So as we do chi sao here, as I roll, you know, see, like, you didn't stick, you didn't stick, you see? So he's worried about changing because he knows that as I change, I'm going to hit him through the middle. So he tries to stay in, okay, can you see this? So as I change here, he doesn't want to go but his shape still gets worried and he leaves himself vulnerable to being hit on this side. And you've got to understand that if you get in contact with anybody, anyhow, they're just going to come off, they're going to hit you, they're going to do whatever they want. So don't be afraid to come off the hands. Okay, so we're wrong. Go, go, go. Lovely big gap, lovely big gap, lovely big gap, lovely big gap. And then just there, there's a classic example when not to stick. He's trying to hold on to me. His hand goes dead. He's only got one brain trying to control four limbs. And you say, well, chi is only the hands. It's the balance. It's the legs, it's the balance. Where the legs go as well makes a huge difference. So as we're tra training in this position here, most people know tricks. Can you feel? So they go, tricks. They go, tricks. Now, I'd have to say, you need to learn those movements, and that's why we covered them. You need to know how they apply. But when you apply them, you don't apply them like with that kind of attitude. What you do is you naturally feel he's gone dead. Can you see this? He's literally just gone dead. And when I did the park cell that time, and you're only going to be able to see this really easily from the, cam the camera above, but I'm going to show it on the opposite side now. When I did the movement, I didn't do the park cell like this. I just did the park cell along his forearm with my fingers pointing in this direction because that will be much easier for me to keep my elbow in that shape. When I go like this, it rotates my shoulder, whereas this won't. So these are purely experienced techniques. These are like my years of my gaining. And I was talking to the guys earlier, saying that when I give this information out, something that's taken me X amount of years to develop and learn and, and whatever, you get it very, very quickly. And my ambition or my wish would be that you then take that journey so much further than I did and far super sight seed my ability. So as we roll and we train, as I push into him, I'm going to see what happens. Now, whenever I change, I always break his angle. I don't stand like this and change like this. 
Can you, can you feel how easy that is to deal with? As I change, I change my angle. Can you see this? So later when I'm moving, I'll just, it, it, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, I am moving no more than two or three inches to one side. But as I change and move two or three inches to one side, that has completely broken that and allowed me to safely leave the stick. So I don't have to try to hit through his arm, not worry that he can block me. And even if he can block me, because of the angle I'm at, he's going to find it a lot harder to counter. So as I move from this side, so we're just doing this basic prune cell rolling, and it could be anyhow. I mean, to be honest with you, it's just a struggle. You still do the same skills. It just doesn't look as pretty. So it's a, uh, it's a format in which it'll give you the chance to understand and learn. That's all it is. So as I roll in this position here and I change and I just move that angle a fraction, his angle's broken. But maybe he is reasonably experienced. He raises his ball. Oh, you don't want to even do that. Sorry. Okay. No, do that. Do that. It's fine. You're going to be very vulnerable in here now because you're going to give me, go bring the hand back. You're going to give me this hand. Can you see the <clears> idea? But you did the bong. I can't get that hand as easily. But when he, because uh, that was the intention I was going to go for. From here, I either press down or I have the courage to just take his elbow. Can you see the idea? I'm not worried about the chop. If I'm worried about the chop, I won't do it. Can you see? And I certainly don't do it with my hand. So what I do is I just move chop. Look. So just a few inches of movement from here to here, he can still chop. But all I need to do is move another couple of inches from here to here, chop. And now the extension point of his elbow, I've covered that. And now I've got the opportunity to counterattack him. So it's tiny details that make the biggest difference. So as we roll. Okay, so now I'm just going to go in here. And what he'll feel is pulling and pushing, bouncing. So that if you push me, okay, I don't really care. Look, can you see? So in other words, when I'm in this position here, he pushes me. I don't care about that. It doesn't matter. And this is when I'm not afraid to break. Now, go. if I push you, I'm going to hit you. But when you push me, you're not going to, can you feel? He's still not going to get that chance to hit me. Now, the only thing you can't do is you can't appreciate how soft this is. Now, it's not pathetic. It's not weak. It's using the wrists and feeling how to use the wrists and how to use your forearms to maintain stick with the person. Because I don't want to get hit. He's not pushing me for no reason. He's trying to do exactly what I was doing, was to push and then hit off of those movements. But when I feel him go, and he pushes and I stick.